Hello everybody. I'm going to try and keep this short. I don't know. I'm limited on what I know about cryptocurrency. But I've been following cryptocurrency, you know, and I've been watching Dogecoin and Bitcoin and so on and so forth. There's a lot of um, people out there right now kind of putting a fear, I don't know if they're intentionally fear mongering or maybe they're not thinking it completely through when they talk about Dogecoin. I think there's a lot of people that are fear mongering. They're trying to protect their interest in Bitcoin, which is kind of, in some ways, I would say it's kind of a, it's kind of a stupid argument because Dogecoin and Bitcoin are two very different cryptocurrencies from what I've been able to figure out while I'm going through the learning process of cryptocurrency. Basically, Bitcoin, there are only so many Bitcoins out there. So what some of these guys that are doing this fear mongering about Dogecoin are saying is Dogecoin is unlimited. There's there's truth to that, but it's 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 kind of a false truth or a misdirected truth. Because let's say it's I don't know how many Bitcoin it is, but let's say it's 20 million Bitcoin. There's only 20 million Bitcoin in existence. That means as more and more data gets created, each Bitcoin represents more and more data. So the Bitcoin, you know, it's starting out like this and it's going and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it becomes a bigger and bigger coin. Whereas Dogecoin, each coin is created as more and more data is created. So if we look at this in the world of real currency, Anybody who understands money, you understand what we what what we're told is money really isn't money. It's 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 fiat currency. Just easiest way to explain it. It's fiat currency. Real money. Most people when they talk about real money, they use gold and silver. What they don't talk about when it comes to real currency is it's not just gold and silver that are real currency. In the metal world, gold and silver are your two main currencies. But there's also the gem world. When we come over into the gem world, that's when you start talking about diamonds, which is what I place Dogecoin as, is a diamond. Dogecoin is your diamond standard. And then you have emeralds and rubies and so on and so forth. They've always been currency too. The reason I think of Dogecoin as diamonds is because data gets created. And as more and more data gets created, it's creating more and more Dogecoins. One of the things that, ironically, it's a it, it's one of the one of the greatest lies in the jewelry world is how rare diamonds are. I'm not saying that diamonds aren't rare, but diamonds are created every single day. Right now, as we're speaking, diamonds are being created. Gold and silver, they they're no longer being created on Earth. There's no more gold being created on earth. There's no more silver being created on earth. But diamonds, on the other hand, are being created every day. As long as, you know, the easiest place to find diamonds is in extinct um, volcanoes. So, as long as volcanoes keep being created and being born, diamonds are coming. That's where you're going to find... So, diamonds are being created every single day. And they're being created at a slow rate. It's the same with data. 
data is being created at a rate where let's say the population will use 16 years old as the worldwide standard i know here in america it's 18 years old but let's use in other countries it's 14 years old in other countries it's 16 years old that you consider an adult so we'll use 16 it's the nice happy median from 14 to 18 so let's say 16 year olds coming into the world where their data is allowed to be mined as an adult so let's say they're entering the world at an average of two or three percent per year that means dogecoin should realistically be being created at two or three percent per year so it's not like it's a unbridled creation it's actually it's controlled by how much data is being created each year that's what's controlling how many dogecoins are being controlled created each year that's what as far as from what i've been able to figure out it's all their it, cryptocurrency is all based on this blockchain and the blockchain is all based on data and data is all based on pretty much adults i mean there's some you know there's some data that's being mined through children but it's not supposed to be mined on children so we're not going to use them in this equation because eventually i have a feeling that you know anyone who's considered an, a, a minor wherever they are situated in the world their data is not going to be allowed to be mined eventually there's going to be a complete block against that at some point in time i have a feeling so that's why i'm keeping them out when it comes to cryptocurrency though that puts dogecoin in the diamond standard it's not exclusively rare like bitcoin which will put up there in the platinum standard i don't know what would fall underneath that but you're going to have a platinum standard a gold standard then i guess you would come over to the diamond standard then the emerald standard then the silver standard you know you're going to come back and forth between metal and gems but you got metal you know you rarest metals then you got your rarest gems then you got your next rarest metal metals then your next rarest gems so that's kind of how it's going to zigzag back and forth through cryptocurrencies that's why i think eventually dogecoin is probably going to be one of the top five cryptocurrencies if it, if it keeps going because the way it's being created kind of makes sense it's limited to how much data is being created but it's not limited to how many coins are in existence so it kind of has a controlled growth so let's say you have people coming into adulthood where their data is going to be legally mined and they're coming in at three, four, five, six percent, whatever it is per year. That's how much data is going to be growing per year too, roughly. Let's say, you know, the majority of adults are going to be doing something where they're going to be entering the data world, you know, meaning that they're homes you know with smart homes smartphones um things like that so there's data being created around them so if that growth is going to be you know three four five percent a year then big then um dogecoin is should be growing at that rate around that data eventually it's going to hit a point where it's finally going to settle out and then it's going to have this nice steady growth year over year of three, four, five percent. That's kind of the way you would expect things to grow. I mean, that's normal inflation. Normal inflation only increases by two, three, four percent a year. You know, when you have inflation growing at seven, eight, nine percent a year, that's not normal. 
and when you have deflation grow, coming at seven, eight, nine percent a year, that's not normal either. And I think, so I think um, Dogecoin, it really follows a model that really fits around a currency model. Because in general, most generations, the baby boomers, you know, you had the baby boomers where they had these big families where you had a family, you know, two parents and you had six, seven, eight, nine kids. Now you got my generation where, you know, the average family, I think, you know, two parents, they have three kids. So, as my generation starts dying off, we're still leaving behind more people than the couple that created the people. For two parents, you got three kids, which means when two people die off, there's still that third person there. So, I think that's kind of how Dogecoin is really going to be working. You're going to have a point in time where, let's say, for whatever reason, there's a generation where two parents only have one child on average. That's going to be a period of deflation for Dogecoin because that means for that generation, when that generation comes in and as they, their parents are all falling out, deflation is going to come into place. But then maybe because of the deflation, you know, for whatever reasons, they start having more kids again because it's just, you have more people in the household. You know, you're going to go, people forget that, you know, this idea of parents and children living alone in their homes, a lot of people think that's a new idea, but it's really not. That's kind of, a, I mean, they think it's an old idea, but it's really not. That kind of, prior to World War II, it wasn't uncommon to have the grandparents, the parents, the kids, and sometimes even grandkids all living in the same household. After World War II, because of how the economy grew so fast, that's where we got to where we are today, where it's common for it to just be parents and children. Grandparents have their own homes, you know, parents and children, you know, then you wind up with the empty nest and so on and so forth. It's, it's not as new of an idea as some people like to put, make you think. It's actually, I mean, it's not as old of an idea as some people like you to make it think. It's only, it's only been, um, realistically, two generations where that's been realistic, where it's been the norm. My parents' generation and my generation, and we're getting into the third generation now. So, okay, we're going into three generations where it's the norm. But when you go back three generations, you're going back into World War II, and prior to World War II, it was common. I mean, the Beverly Hillbillies, that was a common family. I mean, the, the family model was a common family model. The Waltons was a common, common family model. You had generations of families living in a household. So I think, so to get back to the data model here, the... Um, the data model is going to be following how much data is being created with each generation. And so Bitcoin has a set number of coins. So it's going to go up and down, but there's only so many coins in the world. If you only got 20 million coins in the world, but you got 5 billion people in the world, you see the problem there with Bitcoin? That's what's going to make it that platinum standard. Whereas, because data keeps being created and people keep being created, like diamonds being created, that's kind of what Dogecoin is. It, it just, 
it, it's just a model that makes more sense. And so I think Dogecoin, when it comes to cryptocurrency, it really does have the best cryptocurrency model from what I've seen so far of all the cryptocurrencies out there. Because it's going to follow, it's going to inflate, and it's going to deflate according to how much data is being created. And it makes sense. So as a currency, it's, it's the model that makes sense. It's going to... It's just going to do what it's supposed to do around currency with inflation and deflation. It's going to move around generations. It's going to work a little differently than... But at the same time, it's not like our current fiat model where they could just keep printing money, printing money, printing money, printing money. I mean, there's nothing, nothing backs currency today when it comes to any kind of government dollar, whether it's the U.S. dollar, the Mexican peso, the British pound, the yen, nothing backs any of that. But Dogecoin is backed by data. That's what creates Dogecoin is data. What inflates Bitcoin is there's only so many Bitcoin. So each Bitcoin is growing with data, but it's growing at an overly inflated rate because there's only so many Bitcoin. Whereas Dogecoin is growing at a realistic and a fundamentally realistic rate because it's growing around data which is growing around population so I think though like I said you know I know I'm gonna repeat myself here but it just makes dogecoin make more sense it makes it makes the whole dogecoin model make sense actually i am kind of just winging this right now i just watched the video and so i just throwing this off the top of my head because i heard somebody bashing dogecoin and it got me thinking and i haven't really put much thought in this video you know that's what my whole youtube channel is you know i just express my thoughts and i don't really rehearse nothing but I haven't even put any time into this thought, so it's a little incoherent, and I apologize for that, but hopefully you're able to follow my thought process and understand what I'm trying to explain about Dogecoin and why Dogecoin makes so much sense and why Dogecoin, you shouldn't let people scare you away from it as much as what they seem to be trying to. Like I said, I think most of those people that are trying that are expressing this whole narrative that there's nothing backing Dogecoin. That's a false narrative because there is something backing Doge, Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a data-based currency. So that's what backs Dogecoin is currency. And I think they're just trying to protect their interests in Bitcoin. I mean, I could be completely wrong. I'm not saying I'm definitely right on this, but with my limited research, I mean, it's not completely unlimited, but still, it's it's fairly limited. My fairly limited research on cryptocurrency, that's what I've gathered from how it works, and so Dogecoin just really seems to have the model out there that makes the most sense. Let's see what happens.